excuse me for a second. What's going on? You're supposed to run across the stage. I uh, changed my mind. I don't want to do the streaker bit anymore. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Cinematic Adventures. Don't forget, if you guys are listening to us on the go, you can find us on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, basically anywhere you get your podcasts. You can also find more of our content on our website, themisfitfaction.com. There you find links to not only this show, but some of our other shows, like The Multiverse Fancast and MF Uncensored. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Paul, with me via the Zoom studio and from your mom's diary is Sean. Sean, how are you today? Uh, I've been better, Paul, but, you know, gonna going to give you the best I can today. Which is still pretty bad, considering we right. set the bar super, super low just for you we guys. Do. We do. Our you. bar is our bar is down, way down, way down, way, way down. And this isn't yeah. even like a St. Patrick's hangover. This is just Sean being Sean, unfortunately. Being Sean, yeah, he, he's, he's just Sean. I, I could I'm, break down the song right now, but I'm I'm going to save everybody that. Uh, but, and we're going to talk about songs that are just about people. So we'll get there eventually. But we are back. And today, this week, we are talking about the Oscars 2024. At time of recording, the Oscars aired about a week ago. So we've all had time to kind of marinate and think about it and go over it. And the good, the bad, and some of the more. Luckily, this one was a lot less controversial than years past. However, there were still some issues that people brought up. And, of course, we'll talk about all the winners and who walked away with that coveted little gold statue and who was naked for the presentation so let's start off we we have our thoughts on the oscars in general we did a whole episode on the oscars and kind of what our thoughts are but for for any new listeners or new watchers sean what are your thoughts on the oscars as a practice as a practice i mean i will say this the oscars have always been you know an event in my household ever since i was young the first one i really remember watching like from beginning to end was probably the the titanic one you know it was it was fun it was you know my parents took me to a lot of movies as a kid so a lot of times i would see these movies and i'd be like oh okay that movie's been voted the best movie of the year that's pretty cool you get the host which was usually always really good billy crystal was a big one when i was younger john stewart um who else steve martin Whoopi goldberg they've all been really good and now it seems the new one right now is jimmy kimmel he's been doing it quite a lot over the last uh decade I, I like Jimmy Kimmel. I really do. I did not think this was his best one, but you know, it doesn't change with how I feel about him as a, as a comic and as a late night host. I think he's very talented, very funny, but I just, for some reason, the jokes didn't really land as much to me this year as they did in previous years. I don't know. Just kind of felt a little forced, but yeah, that's just I, cool. I like Jimmy Kimmel. I always did. He was my preferred late night host, like over as much as I like, like Conan and obviously Jay Leno back in the day. Uh, mm -hmm. As far as like the modern hosting atmosphere, you have your Jimmy Kimmel, you have your Jimmy Fallon. And I like Jimmy Fallon, too. I just think he leans too far into the music stuff, like way too far. Like a lot of his skits are based more around like lip syncs and stuff like that, which, OK, mm -hmm. every once in a while. But then it turns into like most of his show is a lot of singing, which, OK, whatever. But I liked Conan. I really wish he had gotten a fairer shot at the late show and all that stuff. But in terms of host for the Oscars, yeah, Jimmy Kimmel came out and let's let's start there with the with the opening monologue. The opening monologue sets the entire tone for the Oscars. There are times where it is fantastic and well done, and there are times where it is rough. This one was kind of in the middle. For the most part, like I laughed, he did call out the entire Academy Awards thing for the for the Greta Gerwig situation. For yeah. Those, yeah, for those of you guys who aren't familiar, and obviously if you're watching a podcast about movies and you're watching specifically the podcast episode about the Oscars, you may have a general idea. But Greta Gerwig, the director of Bar uh, Barbie, was not nominated for uh, Best Director. And it was kind of like, a, it, it was a controversy at the time, and it still was. It was a shocker. It was, yeah. it was, it was a shocker. I mean, I, you know, it's one thing to be, it's one thing you win, but to be nominated is another. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's just every year you always come across one of these. It's there's always somebody who's left out. Mm -hmm. um, it just surprised that it was the director of the most profitable movie that the theaters have seen in a while. You know that that Hollywood has really you know you could say this movie and and Oppenheimer saved Hollywood this past this past year because of the strike. But those two movies together were just and you know to use a better word an atom bomb that just crushed you know the money for both their stu respective studios and, and to not even nominate her i just thought was you know it was just kind of like a 
it just didn't seem right. You know, it's like, come on. There you're, was taking, a- you're taking a property that no one expected that to turn that into. And she turned it into this fantastic movie. I mean, the movie that I'll be honest with you, I didn't think I would enjoy. I thought that movie was fantastic. I mm-hmm. really did. Yeah, we we went into Barbie because Barbie was another movie that also had a long road to getting made. Originally, like Amy Schumer was attached to it, and she yep. didn't like the direction that they wanted to go in. So Margot Robbie, who I, honestly, like I hate to say it, if you're going to cast traditional Barbie, Margot Robbie is the perfect choice to do so. Huh. She's another one who wasn't nominated. I mean, you would think, you know, and she was fantastic too. Oh, yeah. And that, that that's ironically enough, it, if you watch the movie Barbie, which we will do our own separate episode on at some point, I think maybe doing a Barbie, we should do a Barbie Oppenheimer episode. Hey, there we go. There we go. But you look at Barbie and the whole point is the the male patriarchy and how men like blah, blah, blah. And to have Ryan Gosling, and don't get us wrong, we I thought he was fantastic in it. He did a great job as mm-hmm. Ken. And the, like the stories services him well at his comedic timing. But to have him nominated, as opposed to having Barbie herself nominated, I, it was the most ironic. It, almost like they planned it. But Jimmy Kimmel, in his opening monologue, pokes fun at, you know, you know, Greta Gerwig is here and she, you know, it's unfortunate she wasn't nominated. And the audience applauds. He goes, you did this. You did this to her. It is your fault. She's... So I actually really enjoyed that because for me, when I do, when I think of hosts, I always think Ricky Gervais because I love when Ricky Gervais goes out and everybody knows that they're going to get some sort of attack to, from Ricky Gervais. And that's why they don't hire him anymore, even though for a while they were hiring him for everything like because he was i mean the first few times he was ho- was hosting it was very good it was something different and then it just got like I, I just don't think he wanted to do it anymore so he just didn't give a didn't give a crap and he was just going after everybody here that he possibly could well he still had the ability to do so he never uh, did the oscars he would only do like you know the golden globes or something like that you know? yeah it's a, it's a shame i would have enjoyed him and going back to like past hosts we've had we've had some interesting ones like did chris rock actually do it or he was supposed to do it he no, the, all right. He did do it. He Kevin Hart was supposed to do it. Kevin Hart was supposed to do it. He backed out. Eddie Murphy was supposed to do it one year, but he backed out. That was the whole Brett Ratner fallout, where Brett Ratner was hired to produce, and then he got you know something came up where he was accused of something. So Eddie Murphy was like, "No, I'm good. I'm done out." Remember the James Franco and Hathaway? God. Like who? I mean, this is and, and you and for anybody who who is unaware and you know go check it out on. MF is uncensored. You had an interview with Bruce Valanche a couple of years ago, I would say. Yep, yep. This is he's been a famous writer for the Oscars ever since the 80s. And I mean, I would love to have asked him. I was like, I don't know if he was involved in it, but I've been like, who was smoking something to think that Anne Hathaway and James Franco would have been a, a great choice to host the Academy Awards? That was that was the most painful night to watch. I mean, it was nothing good about it at all. The problem with them was they're both very talented in their respective areas. Like James Franco, he works better with his stoner crew and like, like, don't get me wrong. He's done a couple of dramatic roles, but also for the most part, he's also been a little mildly canceled. Anne Hathaway is an exceptional talent. She is very talented, Les Miserables and all that stuff. You know, she's, she does well. The, the two of them had no chemistry, zero chemistry together. I would have much rather watch Trey Parker and Matt Stone do the Oscars. (laughs) Yeah, it was like they put them on stage together and they were just like, go at it. They like they had no time to talk. They had no time to plan what they wanted to do. It was just, yeah. oh my God. It was so bad that they begged Billy Crystal the following year to come back just mm-hmm. to like save face. And they were like, oh, it was it was so bad. And well, he was actually even nominated that year. That was the year he was nominated for the 127 hours. And I mean, like, he look, I mean, the joke is he was stoned through the whole thing, but you know, we'll never know, but he did look it. He, he just, he was just not there. Well, I like, I really wanted to see Kevin Hart do it, but Kevin unfortunately, Hart would have been interesting. Yes. At the time he, he had old tweets brought up, which was the big thing for quite some time. And it's still every once in a while you hear about a celebrity like, Oh, they said this 14 years ago, completely out of context. Go anyway. Yeah. So his, some old tweets came up and he apologized at the time when it happened. And then they were like, all right, well, if you still want to host the Oscars, you got to apologize again. And he's like, no, I don't. Like, I already did. Like, I'm not going to do this over and over again for the same thing. And I I respect that stance. I really do. You know, obviously, Sean and I have been around for plus 30 years. We're not going to say exact numbers because that's not going to happen. But when I was 15, 
or when I was 20, same with Sean, we said stupid things. We just didn't put it on the internet for everybody to remember eventually. We weren't able to do that, but hey. And we were getting there. MySpace. MySpace was yeah, big. So we were in that. You were more into MySpace than I was, but. MySpace was teaching kids how to do coding at like age 14. Like you were putting advanced songs and graphics. Oh, anyway, MySpace still around, which is even crazier. But, you know, for that, like the whole Kevin Hart thing, it was a shame that it transpired. I would have liked to see his show. I was, dis- good. I was disappointed with Seth MacFarlane. Yeah, I, I he it didn't live up to what I thought it would be. I, I, I yeah, I I remember that one, and and he was funny at some points, but I don't think the audience was just really into. into they that. weren't. It wasn't his target audience. Like we, yeah. we as like spectators would enjoy it, but you unfortunately with something like the Oscars, even though you're not there, you could still read the room a lot of the time, mm-hmm. and especially because it will zoom in on different celebrities during it, and you'll see them yeah. especially. Especially when the awards are getting like named and announced, like there's nothing worse than seeing. I hate when I see an actor who's like who's nominated, they don't win, and they make it like a fuss, like it's all about them still, instead of yeah. just congratulating the other person. Like just be nominated for an Academy Award is wild. But yeah. anyway, I will well, say that was the big thing. That was the big thing last year, I believe. It was last year when Jamie Lee Curtis won for supporting actress. Everybody like was like Angela Bassett clearly showed she was annoyed that she didn't win. Oh yeah. But she she had won like every other award, so it was it was just you know it's human nature. You're upset. Yeah. You know. Um. But eh, yeah. So going back to Jimmy Kimmel and hosting, what I'm not gonna lie, one of my favorite Jimmy Kimmel hosting bits. It wasn't at the Oscars. I don't remember what show it was at, but he was nominated. I think it was probably the Emmys or something like that. And Matt Damon came out during and was eating an apple, and he's like, mm-hmm. and interrupts him, and he's like, "Oh, did you win that award? No, we just lost. Oh." You must feel really bad right now. Who won? And he like doesn't like, Yes, I love that. It's just really their their rivalry is one of my favorite things. Uh, like it's it's you, they even did something on on the Oscars at the end. Like I'm, I was told that after the credits rolled, <laughs> he does a jab at, uh, at at Damon in the credits. I mean, th- 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 that's been going on now for so long, twenty years. That that rivalry. It's I mean, you know, we're almost at twenty years since the whole F and Matt Damon song came out. That was where it it took mainstream, and then he did uh, the Ben Affleck follow up, which oh. was. Like the fact that they, for those of you guys who don't know, Jimmy Kimmel and Matt Damon have this fake rivalry, kind of like Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds, where they pretend like they hate each other. And it started with Jimmy Kimmel always bouncing Matt Damon at the end of the show. Like, oh, I wish we had time for Matt Damon, but we're out of time. And he kept doing that. And and finally, Matt Damon came on and it was the best thing. Like Jimmy Kimmel lists all these accomplishments, like five minutes of just saying all these great things about Matt Damon. He finally comes out, he waves, he sits down, he gets introduced and he's like, all right, we're out of time. And the... The sound cuts off, but like the, it's still going kind of like a newscast. And you just see Matt Damon like yelling at him. But people thought that was real for a while. But now we all know it's like it's their running joke. It's clearly not. But it's still funny. It really is. To so, the point where even at the Oscars, he always has to he always has to put in the dig. Oh, yeah. to, I, I love it. I eat it up. It's awesome. Yeah, it is. But it really speaking is. of digs, one of his more controversial points so he took two digs. He, he took a dig at Bradley Cooper for bringing his mom, but which was funny. And like, they both laughed. It was like, how, how many times can you bring your mom as your date until you're officially dating? And, you know, like everybody kind of chuckled, but he made a jab at Robert Downey Jr. and at Emma Stone. And those, yeah. are, the, those are the two that it, Robert Downey Jr. was on. He was with it for a few seconds, like because obviously he has a very checkered history of drug use and, and stuff like that. And now he's been sober and clean and super successful for years, ever since Iron Man rolled around. And Jimmy Kimmel made a joke about, you know, dr- doing drugs. And at the time, Robert Downey Jr. like pointed at his nose. Like he's like a little, he meant to say it's a little on the nose, which is like a common phrase, but Jimmy Kimmel kept going with it. And then he, t- he t- Downey Jr. was like, all right, reel it in, like pull it back a little bit. So he, he caught that hint finally. And then he made a comment. I don't remember the comment exactly about Emma Stone, but something about. It wasn't, it wasn't about Emma Stone. It was about, it was, they showed a clip from the movie, Poor Things. And he jokes like, this is the only thing we could show about poor things. Joking yeah. that it's a movie that, you know, would be widely cut on television. Oh, yeah. Which is true. You know. Yeah. Uh, so. And you clearly see her mouth something to her. I don't know if it's her husband or whoever was sitting next to her. And I guess yeah. there are lip readers out there and they say that she she says, what a prick. Or he's a prick. Yeah. Something like, like clear, that. I, I'm pretty confident she's been on his show numerous times and they have a good back and forth, but. I don't know if that's exactly what she said or what. Who knows? Yeah, nobody will ever know. I think she, and I don't think she's done a, uh, too many press releases since. But let's jump into the actual 
Academy Awards. Do you want to do the awards first, or do you want to do my favorite bit of the entire night? Um, uh, let's save your favorite bit because I think you're you're gonna have a lot of funny things to say about it. Um, so let's do a couple of the awards, then we'll do your favorite bit, and then we'll go to the bigger awards. All right. So where where do you want to start? Uh, I guess we could start easily at the supporting categories. So obviously, um, Robert Downey Jr. takes home the uh, the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. It was his third ever nomination and he finally wins it for a supporting actor for Oppenheimer. So um, on, on that note, Robert, so they, they did the, some of the awards a little bit differently where they had past award winners. They, for, they've done that before. I love that. I think that's a great way to do it. So Ki, Ki Hui Kwan, mm-hmm. short rounds as we love him and who is experiencing this huge level of success since everything everywhere, all at once. Did you see all the, that movie? Oh yeah. We did. He, he, oh, we did. That's right. I, I forgot if you were there. That might have been another universe. Sorry. Wow. But, you know, we we when he won last year, that was one of the highlights of Oscar history, him getting up there and doing his speech. Yep. So he presents and then he uh, gives the award to Robert Downey Jr. Now, there's a moment that people are talking about where Downey Jr. comes up and he doesn't even look him in the eye or shake his hand. He takes the award and then he goes to the next people and people are like, I'm not cool, Robert. Come on. Like. So he only acknowledges Sam Rockwell and one other person. I forget who it was, but he doesn't acknowledge the rest of the dais that's up there anyway. But people pointed it out. So Downey Jr. comes up, he gets his award. And for the most part, like I like his speech. Speeches can sometimes be really tedious. They can be tedious. He's been, you know, kind of, I've, I've seen he won the Golden Globe, all, all of his awards. His, his speeches have been very similar. You know, he's a little, what's the word I'm looking for? Cocky. Oh, I was gonna say preachy. Not preachy, he's kind of cocky, you know. He's very thankful to Christopher Nolan and all that, but you know, he doesn't. It's it didn't feel like, oh my god, this is the culmination of my career, kind of a speech. It really didn't. Yeah, just another uh, award for him to put in his, on a shelf. Yeah, I mean, it's just you know. But I'll be honest, like he, he's fantastic in the movie. I, I I walked, I didn't walk out of that movie going like, wow, I think Downey's gonna win an Oscar for that. Right. It was really until he started getting nominated. He won. I mean, he he clean sweeped. I think he won every every award there was, was that he was nominated for. for. Which is um, good. Yeah. No. I mean, yeah, you know, he's been nominated. He was nominated for Tropic Thunder, and then he was nominated back in the '90s for uh, Chaplin. And uh, mm. we got to do an episode on Tropic Thunder. I really want to talk about, it. especially oh. now in today's landscape. I want to talk about oh, Tropic God, Thunder. That'd be, I mean, that, that movie, movie is so just so clever. I love that movie. Oh, it's and it's it, when people weird side tangent when people get annoyed about him doing you know the black get up for it that's the freaking point i know that's what drives me crazy like that's the point that's what hollywood would do instead of offering roles to the proper people of proper races etc cetera, etc cetera, they would get a more famous actor just mm-hmm. and put them in something like that was not uncommon like yeah. especially and they even but- joke about it in the movie with the other the other actor the one who plays uh uh il pacino He's like, what do you mean, you Alpha. people? Al Pacino. Al Pacino. <laughs> Something like that. It's, oh, yeah, we got to do a whole episode on that. I'm already I'm already putting it out there. But uh, let's see. Moving down, we have Best Supporting uh, Actress, since yep, we did yep. Best Supporting Actor, Divine Joy Randolph for The Holdovers. Did you see The Holdovers? I did not. It's on our list. We want to watch it because it looks – I love Paul Giamatti. I, 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 Paul Giamatti is one of those actors I can watch anything he's in. He's just fantastic. And it's from the same guy who did, I believe, Sideways. So it's, you know, you know you're going to get a good script. But I've seen a few clips of her in the movie, and she's great. I don't, but I loved her, and I don't know if you and producer Melanie have watched it, Only Murders in the Building. The, we uh, saw the first episode. So she then you, she's in it. She plays a cop, and she's really got this good rapport with the three of them, and you see her throughout all three seasons. So she it was really nice to see her win. That was a, that was a category I really wasn't sure where it was going to go i thought maybe america ferrara could come out of nowhere and win that or maybe even emily blunt but vine joy randolph took it home and it was good i'm glad for her and then like i said i really do want to see the movie yeah. so, okay. so, let's them. let's move on to some of the ones that we could just kind of roll through quick. oh yeah absolutely best animated film was the boy and the heron which i am shocked spider-verse did not take yeah, I, 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 I was, I was kind of surprised myself, but it's what's his name? Why am I blanking on the creator, the the Japan, the, the guy who did the movie, did Spirited Away, and and all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. can't pronounce his name. I'm, I'm blanking on it. It's bothering uh, me. Hayao Miyazaki. Miyazaki. Thank you. There it is. Yeah. yeah uh, on, my list, on my list, it's cut off, so I just see Hayao yeah. Miyaz. 
Miyazaki like, films. I've only seen a couple. I've seen Howl's Moving Castle and I've seen Spiky's Delivery Service. They're both fantastic. So it was nice. And I don't think he's ever won. I think he won for Spirited Away. Yeah. Um, but, oh, speaking you know, of. I was, I was kind of surprised Spider-Verse didn't take it home because I think the first one did. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Japanese accomplishments, Godzilla minus one best visual effects. Yeah, that I, was a fun, that was fun seeing them jump on. They all had like mini Godzilla. I know, say they were wearing like shoes with Godzilla on them. Like they were all about it. It's, I love when the nerds win. Oh God. <laughs> all right. Now, most of these, we probably have not seen the last repair shop won best documentary. I didn't see it. Well, I'm just going to run through some of these war is over best animated short film. I need to see that because that's based off of John Lennon and Yoko Ono's music. It was, that was a little nice acceptance speech they did. And then they had Sean Lennon, their son up there. And he you know, wished happy Mother's Day to Yoko because it's happy. It was Mother's Day in England last week. So that was, that was really nice to see. Poor Things took best makeup and hairstyling and also best production design. Okay. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, some of these things like Suicide Squad also won best costumes. Let's, <laughs> some of these are just, they're there. They exist. Let's yeah. see. The Zone of Interest won Best Sound. I'm trying to keep the big ones out of the yeah, no, until you. we get there. Best International Film Feature is, or Feature Film was The Zone of Interest. Let's see. Uh, and then it's all oh, 20 Days in, Madripo- uh, in Maripol is Best Documentary Feature. Let's see. Anatomy of a Fall, Best Original Screenplay. And then the big ones. The big ones are like the ones that took all the awards. So do you want to do favorite moments or do you want to talk about Oppenheimer, Barbie, and Porky. Uh, let's do, we could do favorite moments first, and then we'll talk Oppenheimer. All right, so I, I'm going to say it. John Cena was my favorite thing at the Oscars ever. It was the funniest freaking thing that they could have done. And John, so John Cena is one of those more interesting type actors where obviously he started in wrestling with his John Cena perform- performances and his persona that he created. Then he tried moving into strictly action roles, which a lot of wrestlers did. Having him be a comedic action star is one of the best things they could do. His comedic timing is so on point. I love him. Mm-hmm. And there was nothing funny. So obviously, this was the 50th anniversary of the infamous Oscars streaker, guy who ran from backstage totally naked throughout the dais. And I think he went like out into the crowd. Did he get away? I don't remember. I don't think. I'm assuming he was arrested, but yeah. there really wasn't much. Fair, so. fair assumption, but so <laughs> – They wanted to pay homage to it. And the way that they did it was, you know, Jimmy Kimmel cues it up. He's like, it would be a shame if something like that happened again. And it's silence and it's silence. And he goes, I said it would be. And you just see John Cena pop out. He's like, Jimmy, I don't want to do this anymore. And it's just so funny. I guess when they pitched it to the producers, the producers were were on board, but they kept making the envelope bigger just in case. Now, for the record, John Cena is not totally naked. Not that I zoomed in on his crotch under any circumstances. Yeah, shut up, everyone. But yeah, he's definitely wearing like a patch over it, which is fine. But it, it was it was a funny bit. I really it's, Oscar bits can can be hit or miss. Like oh, absolutely. As much uh-huh. as I love Seth MacFarlane, his musical number to make it the best Oscars ever went too far. Went too long. We saw the, we saw the boobs. We saw your boobs. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. People were not happy about that one. They were not, except for Charlie Sterrett. She was in it because that was like oh, right after they have been in A Million Ways to Die in the West. Yeah, they're, so they're very like, good friends in real life. Yeah. I mean, there's some people who get the joke and there's some people who just don't want to be a part of it. I get it. Yeah. Did you see after the after he walks off stage? Because they would show after the words, everybody walking off stage. Because for some reason, they had David Allen Greer like semi-interviewing people backstage. I did not. John Cena is walking off still like butt naked, and he I think he interacts with The Rock. Oh, really? That's funny. I think The Rock was going on was going on the stage because I, I was, don't they not like each other or did he? All not? right, so we'll we'll I'll do this quickly because producer Melanie could probably do this way better. But when they first started wrestling, they had a huge rivalry both behind the cur- uh, the cameras and on camera, and they had very different philosophies, especially once The Rock went into acting. John Cena did not agree with it until. Now he's in the world of acting and he sees it differently. They had this huge rivalry. They didn't like each other, but now apparently they're very good friends, which happens. So I would love to see them in a, in a film together. (laughs) It would be very, very gently Jackie Chan in forbidden kingdom, just hopefully better. But it's a shame because we just watched the most recent fast and furious. And how bad was it? Oh, it's not bad. It's just, it's, you can't look at it with any, the fact that they actually point out in that movie that like the laws of physics, if if it if it involves cars and the laws of physics, these guys have done it all. 
I was like, oh, God. it was all right. But anyway, so going fast forwarding, what was one of your favorite moments of the Oscars? Oh, I mean, it's Brian Gosling performing. I'm just kidding. Yeah. That I might say is up there as one of the best moments since Robin Williams sung Play in Canada. Oh, yeah. So, so obviously the song was nominated and, you know, it's weird because they kind of went away from performing Oscar nominated songs for a while. Like they weren't doing them. And then in the last few years, they started getting back into performing each nominated song. And obviously, you know, the minute the nominations came out, everyone's like, oh, is, is Gosling going to sing? Did you I'm see his reaction out. when they, when it got announced that it was like, there's like a meme of him and he's just like, oh God, like just terrified because now he's like oh my god i might have to perform this song yeah i know i did not see that but so it came out i'd say like a month ago that he was going to perform but there were no details on what he was going to do and he, he i mean the man is just absolutely talented i'll give him that i mean he really is and not only do you he gets what's the producer's name mark ronson on stage with him playing the guitar he gets all the other ken's Oh yeah, to come out on stage and do this crazy choreography with them, and they're like reenacting scenes from like Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, the whole Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend dance number. They're kind of redoing that, mm -hmm. and I mean, just the opening scene of that song alone with Billie Eilish behind him, and she can't keep a straight face, and neither can Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie is just like in tears, crying. Greta Gerwig is like a fangirl, like watching like her favorite boy band perform. It was, it, it really was probably to me, I'd say it's about tied with the John Cena, but maybe a little better for me. I thought yeah. that was the moment of the night. The one thing that would have put it over the top, like as much as I like Slash, we oh, yes. that Slash was there. If they had had one of the most famous boy bands, like an NSYNC or Backstreet Boys come out and, and do just the chorus at the end. Oh, I think yeah. it would have blown everybody. Because apparently NSYNC had some sort of, at time of recording, they had some sort of secret reunion this weekend. And like oh, really? people, lost, people lost their minds. They were at like a Justin Timberlake they, show. I thought they, they got together to do a new song for the new Trolls movie or they something. They did, but they actually like, I think it was a Justin Timberlake concert. And suddenly yeah. they all came out and people lost their minds. But anyway. Minds. Uh, their minds. Everybody loses their minds. Yep. But let's let's talk about our big award winners. Because, big awards. All right. Um, do you, so want to go, do you want to go by movie? We'll do the movie and what awards that it won. We can. I mean, it's a little bit, a little bit easier for discussion purposes. So let's talk. We'll start with Poor Things because you and I have not seen Poor Things. No, uh, that's again another movie on the list. I remember seeing the trailer for it, and it looked like this Frankenstein kind of weird mm -hmm. story, and Emma Stone just is is you know playing this bizarre character great cast i mean mark ruffalo willem dafoe it, it won a lot of technical awards you know makeup production design costume design and the shocker of the night she takes home best actress for that movie and it was surprise it was a shock because the other actress lily gladstone had won i think every other award that this season so it was it was a surprise mm -hmm. um, and it was funny watching her reaction because i think she was like my dress is my dress is ripped or my dress is broken. I mean, she was walking up on stage. Like she looked like she was terrified. She was like, I hope I don't do anything. <laughs> but the, the one funny part was after she won, Jimmy Kimmel came back on stage and was like, make sure to burn that envelope. We don't need that coming back to bite us later on. Cause of course of the whole the La La Land and La La Land the moonlight thing that happened five years ago. But yeah. That was a bad one. That was, that was the biggest shock of the night was her winning best actress. It was a good shock. She's a fantastic actress. And I mean, geez, I mean, quietly she's now a two-time oscar winner you know she's she's and she's still extremely young she can easily win another one you know at some point in her career so to think she started in super bad i know super bad wow. zombie land i mean it's crazy well, and like, you can still see her doing a movie like that she does oh, she seems absolutely. to be like that type of you know she doesn't care what kind of cool. i i would i would enjoy interviewing her i feel like she'd be a lot of fun yeah. all right now here here's the most interesting part i saved this film Despite the fact it doesn't look like they really won too much. And that's Barbie. Barbie was nominated for a ton of things, but it only, I think it only won Best Original Song. It did. Didn't win anything else. Just kind of got shut out mainly throughout the night. You kind of knew I, there was a, there was a, still a chance it could win Best Picture. You never know. There's been a lot of those, mm -hmm. you know, movies that will win Best Picture, even though the, the director isn't nominated or the director didn't win. So I was like, okay, maybe, you know, maybe this movie is just so 
culturally crazy and, and you just maybe it'll still win, but it didn't. But yeah, you know, best original song for Billie Eilish and her brother. It was sadly just that's all it won. I thought it was going to maybe take home some of the technical stuff, but poor thing was really kind of. Yeah, it's like not a, not a best costumes or anything like that. Yeah, I, production honestly. design, because I thought the production design in that movie was great with the whole Barbie land and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And like the the cheap effects that they would do on purpose and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But it's, 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 it's a shame, shame, but you know, that's just the way it is sometimes. But let's talk Oppenheimer, the biggest winner. We have best actor, best picture, best director. What else did they walk away with? Best film editing, best cinematography. The technical stuff I could totally... That's the original yeah. score. That's the original yeah, score. No. That stuff, give it. Like Oppenheimer was an experience in itself. And yeah. I still will say that Oppenheimer did as well as it did because of the Barbie hype. I mean, look at Tenet. Tenet was supposed to come out, and you can't just go based off of uh, Christopher Nolan's name alone anymore. He has to be attached. There has to be other mitigating factors for a lot of these. Like Tenet did not do well. And Tenet it, did not do well, but didn't Tenet come out during the pandemic? That I don't was maybe like the tail end. So that, that's ends. I think that was still a fact. Um, in Tenet, I still never seen Tenet, so I can't honestly. Yeah, people say said that. it was very confusing. Yeah, but, but a lot of his movies are. I mean, Dunkirk. If you really watch Dunkirk, and I love Dunkirk, that movie is all over the place. Mm -hmm. Very like, you know, like no, shot no. here, shot there, and it is a very confusing movie. Um, but yeah, it's this was Christopher Nolan's year to win it. I think. Um, mm -hmm. Once Greta Gerwig was not nominated for director, I really was like, okay, it's, this, this is Nolan's Nolan, yeah. uh, thing. And finally, I don't, I'm ecstatic for him because I think he's a fantastic director. His movies have really become tentpole movies. They really have become events. I'll be interested to see what his next one is. You know, the the, the big rumor is he's going to do a Bond movie, but I, 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 I'll I believe it when I see it. Yeah, I, I like it. So we... we... Our first experience with him was really the Batman franchise, and that's yeah. kind of, but like Inception, all these things. Like he, he, it's like Sean said. Not only is he such a cultural icon in terms of directing, he's he's very much the Spielberg of our time, like this generation's biggest director. You know, obviously you have other famous directors. You got your Tarantino's, you know, stuff like that, who are very good at what they do. And I'm curious to see what Greta Gerwig does next. But mm -hmm. like for Christopher Nolan, he, not only does he put, he's very James Cameron in the fact that he pushes the technology and the filmmaking and he's very progressive with stuff like he's like what can work he pushed imax back into the main feature for feature yeah. films you Absolutely. know you, imax theaters used to just show like big documentaries and stuff like that but he he was like i made this film to be seen on imax to be seen on the biggest he you can tell he loves movies he loves the theater so mm -hmm. and i also I mean, love it oh go ahead. it started with dark knight remember he shot that opening scene with the imax camera and then it progressed to more into Dark Knight Rises and then Interstellar and in, and all that. And then now he's shooting strictly with IMAX for all. So apparently movies. Superman is going to be filmed strictly in IMAX as well. Oh, okay. yeah, interesting. But I also want to throw out Cillian Murphy, well-deserved for Oppenheimer. Great actor. I've, I'm glad he's finally really getting his due. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy to think. I mean, you know, the first thing I ever saw him in was Batman Begins, you know, as Scarecrow. And then, you know, you see him as little cameo in Tron Legacy. And oh, he's, yeah. in every, <laughs> he's in every Nolan film. Yeah. I mean, I can't think of a Nolan film that he has not been in. And I'm really glad that, like, like I said, he's finally getting his due. He's been around for, for a while. Like, he would do, like, some low budget. Like, I remember he was in that movie Red Eye with Rachel McAdams. Shit, yeah, that's Wes Craven. I forgot about that movie. Yeah. So, and he came up and he was super. I, it's always weird hearing his actual voice because yeah. he's got a very thick, what is he, Scot Irish, Scottish? I think so. Yeah, something like that. But he's got a very thick uh, accent. And it was very, I was like, oh my God, that's right. That's how he actually talks. Cause you, he got really famous with Peaky Blinders that really put him over the edge. But like I said, I'm glad. But overall, the Oscars this year, they they were right in the middle of the road. Nothing unexpected. A couple of yeah. really good bits. Nothing that was like super controversial. I mean, nobody's gonna be like cancel Jimmy Kimmel for being the worst host ever or stuff. So for me, like I know we don't normally do Star City ratings for the Oscars, but I'm gonna give it a three. It was just above average. Nothing to write home about, but at the same time, like it was there. We did it. We enjoyed it, and it was it went as expected. Uh, yeah, I'd say three and a half for me. You know, nothing too crazy. Again, it, it's. For me, the, the the show is more enjoyable when a movie you watched, a movie you have really championed, is the one that ends up winning. 
Mm-hmm. You know, so Oppenheimer, the fact that when you see it, you know about it, you're like, oh, this is great. I really enjoyed this movie. I'm glad to see it's winning all these awards. I mean, the last time, I'll be honest, the last time I was really excited was the year Spotlight won Best Picture because I was like, I love this movie. This movie is fantastic. And the fact that it, you know, didn't win anything else in the night except for screenplay, mm-hmm. I mean, it stops everybody and wins Best Picture. It was just like, oh, this is awesome, you know, and stuff like that. But I think that's a big added effect when you have these big movies that are both, you know, kind of in the running, you know, Barbie, Oppenheimer and all that stuff. So it'll be interesting to see what next year brings. You know, we obviously don't even know. There's really nothing that's been out right now that you could honestly say is an Oscar worthy. Yeah, movie. we're only we're only in March, though. We're only in March. You really won't start seeing Oscar movies until probably the summer. And that's uh, also because of the writer's strike. Where well, the writer's strike is going to be a big factor in this next year's Oscars, I would think. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see uh, what 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 we get next year. Well, we would love to hear your thoughts down below. If you guys are watching us on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and put in the comments down below your favorite or least favorite Oscar moments, whether they're good, bad, controversies. We would love to discuss them on our next episode. If you guys want more of our content, you can go to our website, themisfitfaction.com. We have links to all of our shows, news reviews, and articles. And also make sure you guys check out our Facebook page, like the page. Every Friday, we typically do Fan Feedback Friday, but unfortunately, we don't have it this week because of mitigating factors. But that's my fault. I'll take responsibility. But we want to thank you guys for listening. As always, I'm Paul. I'm Sean. And we'll see you guys next time.